Um, <clears throat> there are many things you don't know about me, but one of them is, is that I am a grandson of Malmö, Sweden. My grandfather was a, a, a Malmö fellow. And when I went back there, one of the things that I was really sort of surprised to learn by poking through records was that um, actually Sweden had a fair amount of anti-Semitism. Um, because they couldn't find my grandfather's records immediately, they thought that he was the Swedish equivalent of a Marano. Marano? Marano? Which is what? Jewish, Spanish Jews who lived uh, as Christians by day and Jews by night. Uh -huh. And there was, a, an in, there was in fact a, a large phenomenon uh, that, that took place in Sweden at the end of the 19th century where a lot of Jews were living like that because the king of Sweden wasn't terribly hospitable to Jews. It tolerated but wasn't, wasn't hospitable. So there, there was a, in fact a large current of anti-Semitism that ran from uh, through, through the middle of the 20th century through the war. And the film actually deals with that. And that's what I think is actually quite important about the film is, is that in a very topical, entertaining way, it seems to signal that Scandinavia is, is starting or has for some period of time or is dealing with its anti-Semitic uh, history. Yeah, I would say that that uh, my, uh, what do you call it, um, vision for the film was on the one side to make a, a big widescreen film that would have uh, American entertainment quality. And yet at the same time I wanted it to be edgy and uh, artsy in a European way and I definitely wanted to, to, to keep the social critique of Larson's book. And uh, Larson had these two two things that he really wanted to open up. The one is, of course, I think is the dearest to him is violence against women, uh, which is also the statistics in the book. But the thing about Sweden never have taken a cultural confrontation with their uh, links to Nazi Germany in the 30s and the 40s is definitely true. And I actually don't think that they're taking it now either. I think it comes up uh, in, in literature uh, here and there, but I but you don't really have a film or like you don't really have an awareness about it. Sweden pride themselves of their neutrality. And uh, of course under World War II in the climate that that was back then, the neutrality came with a price. So I, I'm Danish, so I can uh, criticize Sweden cost free, you know, and take a certain pleasure in it too, since uh, we were old enemies. If you go three, four hundred years back, then Scandinavia was the, the Balkans. And uh, one thing that's, uh, that's um, I remember my father uh, always had this anger against the Swedes because they let the German uh, army drive through on the railway to be able to occupy Norway. Uh, and he said, what kind of neutrality is that? But I think that Larsson wanted to dig into the bowels of his own country. Uh, you know, Sweden on the one hand has always been a country that's been standing around like Olaf Palme always, you know, speaking in UN about the disgrace of uh, inhumanity and human rights and all this stuff. And yet at the same time, Sweden has been selling weapons, uh, you know, and making a very, very good money on it for, for decades. So it is a, it's a complicated truth. For us, when we did the film, I thought that in another interesting element of Swedish culture is the uh, and I can't say that word in English. It's, uh, it's, in Danish, it's called patriarch. And it means that uh, Patriarchy. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the man, the father being a strong role. And even though Sweden is a very egalitarian society, all uh, towards um, with, with equalness between the sexes, also like they, the parliament, uh, there's a lot of women in parliament. There actually is a lot of women in the business sector. But still, I mean, you still have this... Um, uh, the, the, what do you call it, like the big Swedish uh, finance leader will take himself uh, very, very serious. Even, I think, to the point that you wouldn't do the same thing in Denmark. I mean, Denmark is a different kind of country and, and more liberal and more south. But uh, in Sweden, this thing about being a strong man, you have thousands of employees, and that still is a, is a big position in society. And I think there is this this thing in Swedish society about men that, that Larsson tried to, to grasp, uh, also through Henrik Wanger and through the Wanger family, which definitely is a, what do you call it, uh, a parallel family to the Wallenberg family.
family. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Wallenberg family of Sweden, which was, is a very, very influenced financial uh, family. And of course, Raoul Wallenberg is more, probably one of the most famous Swedes in the, if you say, in mid last century. Uh, the man who saved uh, 100,000 Jews out of Budapest, uh, risking his own life, and ended up in Gulag in a Soviet uh, prison camp and, and has never been heard about since. Why do you think that this touched such a nerve, first in Sweden and then in Europe, with the, the book? Uh, with Larsson's book? Yeah. Well, I think it's a very entertaining book. I mean, uh, I think Larsson took a genre that's well known and well liked, and then he managed to write a book that, that raised levels over what I would call beat reading. Uh, well, to be fair, I mean, it's not, he, he wasn't, about to get the Nobel Prize when he died. I mean, uh, but he wrote something that's, that's terrific entertainment. And when you look at the first book, it's kind of like an Agatha Christie kind of plot. It's an old family up north, freezing cold, filthy rich, with dark, dark secrets in the closet. In comes this investigating character, you know, Blomqvist, whom we can identify with. He has a golden heart, he's uh, bleeding left his and, uh, and he's good with women. I mean, you know, how, I mean, if he's not Larson's alter ego, I don't know who would be. And what more can you ask? And all that is, is great. It's familiar. It's it, it identifiable. It's exciting. In comes Lisbeth Salander. And she is the totally unusual part of this, uh, of this book. I mean, without her, I would not have made a film out of this book. I could say that truly. When I read the book the first time, I had immediately um, could identify myself and uh, feel the, the underlying emotions of Lisbeth Salander. She's a character that is a parallel to a character in my first film. She, she carries um, a theme that I, that I have worked with before, which is injustice by society towards young people. And I think that she's a terrific character and an icon character for women. The thing about Lisbeth Salander is that I mean, she's a squatter, she's a punker, she's a, she's a gifted hacker. Um, she's also a potential violent. Um, she is uh, definitely a dark angel of revenge. And then she's a broken child with a terrible past, forced, institutionalized. Rape has done, but, uh, done against her. Uh, violence has been done against her. But no matter what you do against Lisbeth, she never becomes a victim and she never surrenders. And I think that is an amazing force. And I can tell you one thing, when we screened this film the first time in Copenhagen for 1,100 people in the biggest theater there is in Scandinavia, and I think that the majority of them were women. And when we came to the place that, um, that she goes and revenge herself on Bjurman, that exact moment when, let me say it this way, Bjurman gets it, there was an outcry in the, I mean, they, they started whistling, applauding, yelling, and I thought, oh my God, we released hell. I mean, the, the emotion from the women was so furious in the, in the room that, um, and you don't normally see that passion from Scandinavian people, you know, they're normally kind of shy in a public room here, man, they were out of the chairs, and I thought, wow, this is not gonna go down uh, calmly, that's for sure. And I think that she's a fantastic character, and I think that, the, the combination of the uh, kind of Agatha Christie plot and her character becoming, in a way, the most scary thing coming out of Sweden since ABBA. <laughs>